guys, welcome back to Nadir Audio. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the all solid state Shit Saga S preamp. So, I bought the Saga to use with my Vidar power amp. So, if you haven't seen the video I made about a year ago on the Vidar, I'll include a link in the description below. But at that time, I didn't have a dedicated preamp to use, so I ended up using a Magni headphone amp, and that worked out pretty well, and I used it that way for a few months. But I did decide that I wanted to try it out with some dedicated preamps and shit seemed like a good place to start since they have a pretty affordable range of preamps that would work well with the Vidar. So the Saga is sort of their entry level preamp that can run in both active and passive mode. And it starts at $300 and in this silver finish you see here it's about $30 more than that. Now there, for $100 more you can get the Saga Plus which is a hybrid amp that also includes a tube, and that's something that normally would really appeal to me. But if you see my previous videos, you know that I do have a tube amplifier that I like to use, and this is a solid state system that I'm basing around the Vidar. That I prefer to keep all solid state, that way when I'm in the mood for tubes, I can just use my tube amp. When I'm in the mood for solid state, I can use this system. So I ruled that one out. Uh, for about twice the price, you can upgrade to a Freya, and that gets you, in addition to any sound improvements, it gets you the ability to run balanced. So if you, for example, if you wanted to use Vidars or two Agiers as monoblocks, you would actually need a Freya or something like it to be able to do that. Uh, you can't do that with a Saga here. So that's one downside if you want to run monoblocks. And that's something I had thought about a little bit, but when I bought my Vidar a few months later, it came out in the version 2. So at this point, I'd have to get a used one or I'd have to upgrade to 2 version 2, so it didn't make a lot of sense. So I just decided to get the Saga instead as a good starting point. Now there is also a Freya Plus at the top of the line, which also adds tubes to the mix. Um, and so, you know, in the future, we may check those out. But for now, for the particular system that I wanted to put together, it seemed like the Saga made the most sense. Okay, so starting on the left here, we have five LEDs that correspond to our five inputs on this device. And we can use the button right next to those as the input selector. So we can click this and you'll hear a relay click and then it will cycle through those different inputs. And just to the right of that, we have our giant volume control, which has a really nice feel to it. And you'll also hear some clicking as I turn this. Uh, so shit calls this a passive relay stepped attenuator. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the remote here in a minute. Uh, so the button to the right of that is the output mode. So currently we have an LED lighted at the far right that indicates that we're in the active JFET buffered mode. Uh, but if I click this, that light goes off. Now we're in pure passive mode and then we can go back into active mode by clicking that again. So to the right of that we have the IR sensor for the remote control. And then we have one more LED here which corresponds to mute. So you can mute from the remote, which we'll look at in a minute. But also, it's important to note that this preamp has a standby mode. So when you first turn it on, it takes about 60 minutes to warm up. So when that happens, this light will flash and there won't be any sound output. And then you'll hear a relay click and this will go solid. And then you know that it's running and you're actually going to get sound output out of it at that point. So let's take a closer look at the remote control. So one nice thing about the Saga is it comes with this really nice remote control, which is in a milled aluminum case and it feels good in the hand. We just have a handful of controls here. Uh, we have the ability to change inputs and you can hear the relay clicking there. Uh, we have the ability to put it into and out of active and passive mode. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute here. Uh, we have the ability to mute, which is a handy feature. And then, of course, we have the ability to change the volume. And again, we have our stepped attenuator relay, and which you can hear clicking. So as I push this button, uh, we get a nice satisfying click, and it changes the volume for us. Now, I'm not averse to getting up and changing the volume. That's something I have to do when I'm using the tube amp. But it's kind of nice to have, and I definitely take advantage of when I do have a remote to use. Now, this remote actually looked very familiar to me when I received it because they're using the same milled aluminum case that PS Audio is using for the Sprout 100. So this was the amplifier that I started this channel with and that actually I'm still using in my office setup. Uh, it works very well there. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, it's a very nice case, so I'm glad to see that they're using the same supplier. For PS Audio, they silk screen the logo right here on the metal, and in Chit's case, it's just on the plastic insert here. Uh, but in both cases, I think it's a nice remote, it looks really nice, and is very functional. So let's take a quick look at the back panel. Okay, so the first thing we notice here on the back panel is that no, we don't get any balanced inputs or outputs with this device. But that's okay, we don't need them in our current application. I wouldn't necessarily expect them at this price point. And it would be tricky even just to put a couple of balanced outputs on this device given the limited real estate on the back panel here. Uh, so we're going to give it a pass on that. But we do get all of our unbalanced inputs, all five of them here, which is nice. And then we do get two unbalanced outputs as well. So that comes in really handy if, for example, you're running a subwoofer. The only other thing of note here is, yes, the power switch on this device is still on the back panel. It is this really nice uh, toggle switch, but it is on the back. Which, uh, on this, on a device of this size, doesn't really bother me that much. It's not that hard to reach around and flip the switch. But, for example, on the Vidar, it is a little bit of a pain. And I do believe, actually, on the Vidar 2 that they moved that to the front panel, the same as the Gear. Uh, so maybe that's something they'll do with the Saga at some point. But it's something to be aware of for now. If you're buying this generation of the Saga S, uh, you're going to have to deal with it being on the back. All right, so let's take this puppy, put it back in our main stereo, and talk about our setup. Okay, so for this video, we've been using our Gashelli Labs J2 DAC. If you haven't seen my recent video on that, I'll include a link in the description below. And from that, we're running into our preamps here, so either the Saga S or the Magni headphone amp that I was previously using. So for AB comparisons, I've just been uh, physically plugging and unplugging the unbalanced inputs and outputs from one device to the other. And that works pretty well because we've got both devices right here and it's pretty easy to just reach around and change the cables. Uh, so from these guys, we are running into our Vidar as a power amp. And then we're using our CAF LS50s as our speakers. So in terms of sound quality between the two preamps, I'd say that the Magni is pretty similar to the Saga S when the Saga is in passive mode. Uh, they have a similar sound, but the Saga actually, even in passive mode, sounds a little bit better to my ears. Uh, it has a little bit more resolution on the high end. There's a little bit more space and air between instruments, but it's pretty close. They're very similar. Now, the gain levels are different. So the Saga S, whether you're in passive or active mode, the gain level is always the same between the two. So for optimal listening volumes, for me, usually the volume knob is right about at the midpoint. Uh, now, the Magni actually has a slightly higher gain output, so the volume knob would be a little bit lower on that one for the same volume level. Now when I was doing comparisons, I was using my SPL meter to make sure I was comparing at the same volume. Uh, but either one gets plenty loud for as loud as you would ever want to get with this setup, so that's not a problem with either one. Uh, but again, when in passive mode, the Saga sounds similar to the, the Magni, but as soon as you switch the Saga into active, JFET buffered mode, it actually does add a lot of, I would say it would adds weight to the various instruments and just makes everything sound a little bit more real, a little bit more like a live recording where the players are actually there performing in front of you, whereas in the passive mode they're a little bit more disembodied. So I really like that and I basically just left the active mode on for uh, most of the listening I was doing and I was only using passive for comparisons because I think in general for all the different uh, genres of music I was listening to it always sounds better in active mode in this particular setup. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about some of the recordings that I listened to. So one of the CDs I listened to for this video was the soundtrack to the movie Deep Red by the band Goblin. This is a movie from Dario Argento from the 70s, and it's a good movie. It's worth checking out on its own. It's not one of my favorite of Dario Argento, but it is definitely one of my favorite soundtracks. And it's interesting to note that the original keyboardist and composer for the band Goblin, Claudio Simonetti, has actually reformed a version of Goblin that currently tours. And we saw them earlier this year at the Paramount in downtown Austin, and they were playing along live with the soundtrack to the movie Suspiria. So we got to see the movie and hear the soundtrack being played live. And then they did a pretty long concert afterwards and it was really awesome. So yeah, if you get a chance to check them out, I definitely would.
Uh, but this is the original soundtrack and there's a second CD that has a lot of the sound effects and music that was used in the movie that wasn't in the original soundtrack along with some alternate takes and some remixes. The second CD is definitely worth having but it's really the primary original soundtrack that I was listening to the most. And it sounds really good. So it's not an audio file recording. It was recorded in a studio and mixed in a studio. But it's a really good studio recording and it sounds great with the Saga, especially when it's running in active mode. You really almost feel like the uh, the basses and the drums and all the different players are, are right there. Um, pretty good for a studio recording of this era, I would have to say, and I really enjoyed it. So another CD I listened to was Just Coolin' by Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. I picked this up at Waterloo Records in downtown Austin a few months ago. And I had never heard of this record, and I think that's because it actually was never released when it was originally recorded back in 1959. Uh, the record label Blue Note uh, just kept it in the vault and sat on it but didn't release it. Now, if you're an Art Blakey fan, you've probably heard some of these other tracks. Uh, they were released as live recordings on a couple of subsequent albums. Um, but I think maybe the reason that they didn't release this originally is it's a little bit laid back for an Art Blakey uh recording. So typically, you know, especially for albums like Free For All, they're just very, very active and frenetic and there's just a ton of energy. This I find has a lot of energy too, but it's just a little bit more subdued and some might even say a little bit more refined, but I, I really like this. I think it sounds great. It's uh, the original recording that Rudy Van Gelder did in his own studio and I'm really glad I found this album and yeah, playing it on the Saga, when I switched to the Saga and then I listened to this CD, it really help bring it to life. Uh, so in active mode, I really enjoyed listening to it. It sounds great and uh, I've listened to it for a few times. And uh, yeah, definitely recommend this and the saga. But yeah, I listen to a lot of other stuff. I listen to a lot of electronic. I listen to a lot of classical. And in general, like I said, I think the saga sounded great and I just left it in active mode most of the time and it just worked really well and really just improved my enjoyment of my solid state setup here. So. I'd highly recommend it. I'd say if you have a similar type of setup and like a VIDAR and you don't have a preamp, uh, if you do happen to have a shit headphone amp hanging around, I think that's a good place to start. Uh, but if you don't have one of those or a preamp at all, I probably would just save your pennies a little longer and then get the Saga because I think it's really a great deal for $330 for the silver version of this one. I mean, we get five inputs, we get two outputs, we get a remote control and it sounds great so I think it's really a pretty good deal and highly recommended. But yeah I think that's it for this one guys so I will see you all in the next video. Thank you!